Um, training is going to be a little bit different today. We have to do some filming after. So today we're just going to do uh, like 15, 20 minutes of you guys can drill, you guys can warm up, do whatever you want. I'll be walking around. Um, if you guys have any questions about any problems that you've been having in training, feel free to ask. Um, and then we'll start rounds at probably 12, 15, 12, 20. And then please, when you guys are done training, just go straight to the shower and head out because we do have to do some filming after. All right, let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Craig has to do some filming after, so we're gonna cut it a little bit shorter today. The students can drill whatever they want. I'll walk around if they have any specific questions. They can feel free to ask me, I'll help them out. Uh, and then we'll go straight into rounds. What's about your general strategy when going up against a half butterfly? Half butterfly? Okay, yeah, so you, or, uh, do you have any upper body grips yet? Uh, just from here. Just from here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, to be honest, so <laughs> if I'm in half butterfly, okay, I'm only really gonna wanna be here if I can get some form of upper body control, whether it be body lock or cross face underhook, okay? Uh, generally, I recommend against just kinda sitting on two knees in front of somebody. Um, like, if he wants to stop me from here, from just if he just keeps his knee in the middle of my chest, it's gonna stop me from getting any upper body grips. So I would recommend just going going up vertical, and that way you can start flanking and coming out to a side. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of just sitting on two knees in front of somebody, because you're not putting any pressure on them, you're just kind of waiting for them to do something and then reacting. So I always recommend just going vertical, and that way you can be more proactive. Yeah. So like, the other one is, I think you might say something similar, but when the guy like locks his knee on the hip, it's just like hard to come with up into like a knee cut. Yeah, uh, I, I generally like to sprawl it out. So the way I do it, so if he's in here, okay, and he's got his, his uh, legs locked, okay, number one is uh, if I'm going to sprawl, I want to get my hip on top. So sometimes I'll just do a simple knee post, and I'll just start moving my body weight over top of his knee. Then from here, I'll start reaching for a tight waist. My second hand can just get placed in the hip. And now from here, when I sprawl, I have my chest collapsing down on his knee, so I can start to separate his legs. Then from here, normally I like to use like a rolling motion of my form along its back just to lift him enough so I can start locking and then you can start stepping up going into to half guard or straight into mount depending on what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Can I see that um that wedge back take you did from uh here when they go K guard and then and then they went backside here. Yeah, so they feed the foot through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm in here. Uh, can we do this leg? Which one? This one. Yeah. So yeah, so he f manages to feed his foot through so he can't do the normal wedging back take. Okay, I just take two grips on his ankles. Okay, and then from here, I keep him in a stacked position and I just start back stepping around the corner. It'll have to be like a series of small steps. Then once I'm squared up with him, I just switch my grip like so. I keep back stepping around to the other side. And now from here, I just fall down towards my hip. As I fall, my right knee will penetrate through his hip and I'll end up in a position like so. And from here, I'm scissoring my legs, okay? So my left leg's extending as my right knee's coming towards my chest. And then I just plant both of my feet on the mat and get control of his hip and trap. Post the foot inside, push him down, and start inserting hooks. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I mean, well, I was just kind of thinking right now, like, I, mean, I see you do it a lot, I see, like, Jamie, you do it a lot, but, like, that passing where you control your knees, kind of, like, getting your foot, like, stepping, you on his hip right there. Yeah, high-stepping. Like, yeah, no, there we go. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, standard method of high-stepping, okay, number one, I want to get him down to a hip. So I'll start out by just grabbing ankle and knee, and I'll shuffle out to a side to get him down to a hip. Okay, if he's square hips, okay, there's other things we can do, like front pummels into shin on shin and then go. Um, but if I try and step straight to the hip, I'm just going to get my legs entered every time. So initially, yeah, we always want to walk him down to a hip. Okay, once he's on a hip, I have ankle and knee. I just bring my right knee to my chest, and I step straight into the pocket of the hip. Yeah, uh, when I step, it's super important. I have toes and knee pointing towards the far hip. My second leg follows up, and then I actively kind of want to roll onto the outside of my foot so that I can flare my shin into his uh, thigh. That way, when he tries to uh, insert this leg, it's going to be pretty difficult. Uh, and then from here, there's, there's a bunch of things we can
can do kind of depends on his reaction. A lot of people will connect top knee and elbow to try and prevent a level change down. You can feed left hand in, sprawl back and start going in the body locks, or you can also feed right hand in and circle around towards the north south. So you're talking so like the first thing you're really saying about doing it, like really getting them off the side here. Yeah. And then it's, it's super important that you control top ankle so that he can't high leg. Yep, elbow block go behinds are good as well. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to work on here a lot better about. Yeah, and super good. Yeah, I mean, it's so low energy for you and such high energy for them. It's so frustrating from the mess up from the bottom perspective. I feel like I'm wasting so much energy just trying to not get past. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. All right, guys, we're going to go into some positional and live rounds now. We're going to do first round mounted, second round turtle, third round is going to be half guard where man on top has cross face underhook and then three open rounds. If you want to get a drink of water, now's the time that will begin. One, two, three. Oh. 